Hey saddle hunters, it's a nice day out here in Michigan. We're a couple days ahead of the bow season and I have been playing around with my Eberhardt signature saddle. I did the unboxing video to show you guys some of the features. So today I want to go over a little bit about how to use it and give you a little bit of a review. Now I mentioned that I thought there was going to be a learning curve with this and there is, but in playing around with it for a few days, I think a lot of that learning curve can be overcome and my goal in this video is to show you a little bit about how how to do that so let me direct you first to John Eberhardt's channel Eberhardt Outdoors he's got an excellent video there about the ESS how to use it and that'll get you started in the right direction I just want to point out a couple additional things that I have found to be helpful when using the ESS so First off, we're going to talk about putting it on and kind of how to manage the straps as you put it on, how to wear it in so that it's quiet, things like that. So first thing you want to do is get your saddle laid out and I've adjusted the bridge so that it's about 20 inches. Uh, I, I think anywhere 16 to low 20s would probably be good for most people. So you want to grab it by the bridge and make sure that your panels are overlaid as square as possible, okay? I have the plastic clips on there right now and I'll show you those a little bit closer up but I tried the clips on both the outside piece of webbing and the inside piece of webbing and I think they work a lot better on the inside piece of webbing now I'm going to show you exactly where I've clipped them I've got them clipped onto the the second molly section and that's for a particular reason I, I've got it slid up behind the molly and I chose that spot because as you can see there these first two sections of molly the webbing is doubled over so by sliding it underneath one of those two doubled over sections there's a lot more tension on it and it stays in place a lot easier so I would recommend that I've had a lot more success running it here as opposed to under one of the single molly sections the other thing I might suggest to you is that I think I'm going to run some stitching around it, probably right just over the front so that it's right in the middle here, to keep it in place. It has a tendency to want to slide around this strap and they can be hard to find when you're trying to put it on, especially at the end of the day. So I stick it right there and I'd suggest maybe putting a stitch or two around it to keep it in place. So anyway, I make sure those are clipped up. I make sure that it's laying flat. You want to you wanna make sure that your leg loops are coming straight out, laying down flat on the front. Everything's as neat as possible. Here's another big thing that John mentions in the video that I found to be super important. You want to make sure that the belts are angling outside. Now I'm I'm only at 32 inch waist and you can see here I have had to you know double that up double it up double it up put it under the webbing keeper to get it to fit so this one doesn't naturally want to bend out as much for me I've not found that to be a huge deal the other side you definitely want the tag end here you definitely want this laying on the outside so just make sure that that's kind of laying out like that now hold it from the top you grab near the D-rings with each hand. Make sure you're underneath the D-rings, grabbing the webbing, and then you step through it. Okay? You pull it up. Just I, just, I like it just kinda so that I'm feeling the kind of the, the top of my hips, all right? You grab both D-rings with one hand and use your other hand to get your buckle in place. Switch hands. Grab your tag end, clip it, and then tighten it. You want to pull it pretty tight. So now, I've got the saddle on, and it's tight, ready to be worn, okay? Ready to go. Couple features here that, that I think, or couple factors I, I would like to point out to you that I've found helpful. I've been really concerned about these D-rings kind of dangling around in the front and banging on my climbing sticks or banging on my wild edge steps and making all kinds of noise. Went so far as you can see to try to put some, some vet tape around one of them. And it does a great job of quieting it down. You can see that. I mean there's a little noise but it's significantly quieter than that metallic noise. Okay? but. 
the bridge does not want to slide easily through there at all with that vet tape on it. Now, maybe you'd have better luck with hockey tape or gorilla tape or electrical tape or something, but you know, I, I kind of abandoned that and was looking for another simple way to keep these out of my front where they're going to bang onto things and quiet. So here's what I've come up with for, for the walk in and while I'm ascending the tree. I have taken the leg loops and instead of bringing them around and attaching them in the front, for the walk in, I'm grabbing it, running it around the back of my leg and clipping it into the leg loop hook. See that? And then I grab the other one. Same thing. I grab it, run it around the back of my leg, hook it onto the loop like that. And then pull those tight. So what that does is it keeps those D rings pulled back into the side so that now they're not right in front of me where my climbing sticks are going to be. They're offset off to the side, much less likely to bang into the metal. Now, the, it also is nice because it doesn't impede your movement. They just slide right out of the way. You can pick up your knees, climb the tree, do whatever you need to do, and they're not restrictive. They're not restrictive for the walk-in. It, it just seems like it works well. The next thing I would do is take my bridge, because it's fairly short, I just temporarily unclip my waist belt buckle, run it through there, clip it right back up, and boom. Now it's secured down tight, everything is streamlined, and it's gonna be really easy for me to walk into the woods, nothing's banging around, the saddle's super flat, super compact, ready to go, that's what I'm looking for in a saddle. So, that's the best way I found to get the D-rings out of the way without loading all kinds of silencing on them um, so that they can be as quiet as possible while you're climbing the tree. So, that's how I would get ready to go. Now, I'm gonna jump on my Predator platform here at ground level and show you some of the other kind of tricks that I think are, are helpful to managing the webbing in the saddle, okay? so. Imagine that I've climbed the tree and, and now I'm at my platform. Of course, my, my lineman belt would still be around the tree. At this point, I, I step up onto my platform. I like to, before I, before I undo the lineman's belt or make the transfer, I like to just quick take the bridge out, grab it, step onto my platform, and, and hook up, to, you would hook up to the tether before you even step onto the platform in case of a failure, okay? So, hook up to the tether, then step onto the platform. Now, I'm ready to do some adjusting. So at this point, I could safely take my lineman's belt off. The next thing you wanna do is loosen the waist buckle. Not the buckle, but loosen the strap, okay? Feed it some slack. And you're gonna want it pretty loose because the tighter you have it, the more it impedes the independent movement of those two panels, especially the top panel, okay? So you loosen it up, and then what I've found, you want to, at this point, disconnect the uh, leg loops as well. And these, these, these are a little bit tighter, and they, they work better than my other previous G hooks like on the tethered mantis. So disconnect those, let those hang down. And then you wanna take your saddle and both panels together, make sure that it, both panels go underneath your butt, all right? Both, this is, this I found to be really important. You wanna move them as a unit underneath your butt, reach through, you'll have to give some length back to your leg straps because we tightened them down for the walk-in, okay? Get those hooked up, all right? Now you're ready to adjust the saddle into its position. I have found when you move this saddle into its position, you wanna leave the bottom strap section rather, underneath your butt, and then move the top panel independently. So, 
I found that I want to grab it and push down on the top of the plastic clips while I grab the molly webbing. All right. Hopefully you can see that in the video. So I'm going to grab it, push it out, and I just like to move it up a smidge. I, I found it to be comfortable to move it up so that the, the middle straps, what would be the bottom strap for the upper panel and the top strap for the bottom panel are basically overlaying each other so that I've got basically three pieces of webbing. That's what I found to be the most comfortable. Then I'm actually taking and sliding the top panel strap back into the clip to keep it in place. And I do that on both sides and now I'm ready to hunt. And I like this because I, it's so low. Look how low that is, guys. Some of these saddles nowadays, they got so much fabric, they're riding way up into here and it limits your mobility. By keeping it low like that, man, I've got a ton of mobility to turn around and make, and make shots. So I think that's fantastic. I like sitting. This I found to be super flexible as far as sitting. I feel like I've got good comfort when I'm sitting down, a lot of good support. And then it's easy to just adjust back and lean if I want to lean. Now, you, uh, you might want to give your leg loops a little extra length. You, you'll feel that out throughout the sit. Don't be afraid to adjust that. I have found on the bridge that it's helpful to have this tri-glide adjusted as close to the D-ring as possible for a couple different reasons. Number one, the closer it is, the less likely it is to kind of spin around and bang. If I've got it you know, two, three inches out, it can flip around and hit, hit this portion down here. So having it pretty close limits that. The other thing is, if I want to turn and make a shot, I want that thing to be able to spin in that D-loop without that tri-glide hitting, okay? If I have it three, four, five, six inches up here, it's going to spit, spin and hit the carabiner, and I'm going to have limited mobility. So low, close to the D-ring is good. A um, couple other things, you know, I, when I was playing around with it, I was trying to do a lot of adjustments of the bottom piece and found that to be really hard to do. You want to keep the bottom piece, from my experience, in place and adjust the top one. I found that I didn't want to bring the top one up too, too far. If I, if I brought it up into here, man, I, it, it took the majority of the pressure of both panels into my lower back and I found it just extremely uncomfortable. So, I, I, you know, in my experience, lower is better and more underneath your butt it is super helpful. So those are just kind of some of the comfort tips that I've found out as I've been using it. I had a real problem when I first started using the saddle with kind of how do I get the thing back where I started for the climb down. How do I get it positioned back around my waist with the lineman belts in place and where it's you know streamlined so that I can use my lineman belt easily going down? I had a lot of problems trying to manage the strap to figure that out. Eventually, I think I've got it, so I'm gonna show that to you now. If I've been hunting, my, my straps are still generally overlaid. What I wanna do next is make sure that they're not clipped in on either side. Okay, so make sure they're not, not clipped in. And, and I've found you, you, you kind of just lift up on one side and pop it out while keeping pressure. And then you're gonna wanna move the top panel. Once again, we're moving the top panel, not the bottom panel. Move the top panel down so that it overlaps the bottom panel. The best way I've found to do this is not to try to grab it up here. You don't wanna grab it near the front of the D-ring. So you, you don't have much control there and these things will overlap and, and get all kinds of hung up on each other, and that's a major problem. Before I, I show you exactly where you wanna grab, the other thing I would mention, right on the back here, there was this giant, you know, white safety and security tag. I hate to say this, but you gotta cut it off because it prevents the panels from easily moving over top of one another. Uh, I found the top panel was constantly getting snagged on that that white piece of paper with you know safety warnings on it so that it was preventing me from easily moving it back on top of the bottom one. So take a couple minutes, cut that thing off of there. Um, 
The next thing you're gonna wanna do when you try to position the saddle lower, you're gonna wanna grab it near these vertical supports, okay? See that? You run your finger down the strap until you hit the vertical support on each side. Grab the vertical support, and you wanna be leaning, I found. You don't wanna try this sitting down. Leaning like I am right now is the best, and you just kinda of take weight off and, and push it down until they're overlapped. And then you can take your clip, do one side at a time, and just work that clip back underneath the webbing. Once you get the tip of it under the webbing, you put your thumb on top of the doubled up webbing, your index finger below the clip, and you push it back up together. Same thing on the other side. Sometimes you'll notice that the clips have a tendency to ride toward the middle of your back, and so you might have to reach behind and grab it. You can do this with two hands. Take a little weight off, get it positioned, and, and it can take a little finagling sometimes. You want to make sure that you're behind the second piece of, of webbing. If you're, if the tip's between the two of them, you're gonna, it's going to be really hard to try to push it up through there. So you make sure you're behind both of them. So now the saddle is, is overlaid back in its starting position. Now, I, I found that the uh, best thing to do is grab it once again at those vertical supports. Just kind of pop your weight up until it's near your starting position. Tighten the well you spelt down. And then you're ready to go. It's sitting there conveniently in place. At this point, you might even take the leg straps and run them back around and, and hook them up the other way if you want to, to get the D-rings out of the way for the climb down. You have to give them a little extra length to hook them up. And then when you stand up, you're gonna want to tighten them down to get that tension again. So stand up, give them a little bit. Now, I'm ready to go, saddle's low out of the way. I would put my linesman's belt around the tree, connect in, take my tether off, and climb down. For the climb down, I would just tuck it, and I can show you here because I'm at ground level, but I would take it out of the carabiner, and I would just tuck it behind the waist belt. That way I didn't have to unclip the waist belt, and I would go down. You could even do that on your ascent. Before you start climbing the tree, that way you're not unbuckling the waist belt at height. So just clip it right behind, or tuck it right behind. I like to clip it for the walk-in because it's, it's just a little bit more secure. So anyway, that's some of the helpful tips and tricks that I figured out with the ESS as I've used it in the last few days. To give you a review, I like how streamlined it is. I like that the saddle's compact. I think the sling style with the two panels is very comfortable. This saddle is pretty light. It comes in at one pound, 15 ounces, which is more than the Phantom, less than the Trophy Line, less than the Arrow Hunter Flex. I'm sure it's gonna be less than the Merlin. Um, pretty light, okay? But I love that it's streamlined. You get a lot of comfort out of that. You know, the two panel system, it's got a lot of flexibility. I, I think it's a comfortable saddle. The biggest downside that I've found with this Eberhardt Signature saddle is twofold. Number one, what I just showed you, there's a little bit of a learning curve. It might take you three, four, five practice attempts in your yard to get a system worked out like I've got figured out here. But I think that's worth it. The second biggest concern that I would have, and I know a lot of guys are gonna have, are those D-rings. You know, they're kinda hard to silence because if you put stuff on there, it, it makes the bridge kinda tacky and not want to slide through the d-rings easily you know but you also you run the risk of them banging into your sticks or your steps banging into your waist belt when you're trying to put it on or the t-hooks there's just a decent amount of metal that has the potential for making noise so you got to weigh that with your climbing method 
you know, whether you're slow and conscientious and can kind of manage that, or if you're just a guy who's going for speed and wants to get up trees as fast as possible and things, you know, this may not be the saddle for you because it takes a little bit of work to, to manage it and position it and, and try to keep it quiet. But all that to said, I, I think it's an excellent offering, slightly different style than a lot of the other single panel saddles or the JX3 hybrid that's out there, but it's comfortable. It's going to serve a purpose for a lot of guys. It's a one size fits all. I'm on the lower side of the spectrum. I'm a 32 waist. I saw one guy in particular, he, he tried to quiet the, um, the D rings by hooking them together across his front with a um, carabiner. And, and I tried that, but my problem is being so skinny, those D rings come a long way around the, the point of my body and they, they overlap. I just have no tension. If you're a little bit wider than I am, they might rest three, four inches apart and you could just clip a carabiner there and they, they have tension pulling outward from your sides and, and they'd probably stay pretty quiet. That didn't work for me, but I think that leg strap idea is gonna work to keep it quiet. Uh, anyway, I hope this review is helpful to you. If you have any tips or tricks that you've figured out about using the ESS, post them below so other guys can learn. Otherwise, stay tuned to the channel. I'd appreciate it if you guys would subscribe. I bought a tree hopper recon sling that I'm going to do a review of here in the near future and, and then a video comparing and contrasting that with the ESS because they're such similar styles. And then I have an Arrow Hunter Merlin on order as well. So there's gonna be some more videos coming down the pipeline. Appreciate you guys' support and thanks for tuning in to the Saddle Hunting Channel here on YouTube.